Hello, everybody. Here's something fun and new. New in that it uh, just arrived to me. New in the country. I think this is the second vintage that they've made of this. This is um, Gulp Ablo Orange. Um, it's sort of a... So it's from T. Edward Wines, the importer. Um, this is sort of a project of theirs, but uh, made by the Parra Jimenez family in La Mancha, Spain. Uh, they are the farmers. They have two large vineyards. I forget how large they are. They're relatively large, like a lot of hectares. Um, but, oh, geez, should I get into this? So it's all biodynamically farmed. This is certified by Demeter, uh, also certified. So certified biodynamic by Demeter, also certified organic um, by um, uh, Sohi Cert. I don't know how that, that might be a Spanish company. It's also certified vegan. Um, so all their farming is both biodynamic and organic certified. Um, uh, this is not a very expensive wine. There's you know other gulp and uh, handwork and friend and farmer wines that are all, none of them are super expensive. And normally I would expect biodynamic wines to be more expensive than these are, but uh, La Mancha is a particularly easy place to farm grapes anyway it's it's dry there's not it's not like damp there's not like tons of rain so you don't have to worry about like mildew and rot and you know a lot of different like vine diseases that you have to worry about in damper wetter more difficult places um you know for whatever that's worth uh this is an easier place to work very naturally so whatever point is so this is biodynamic wine the para family are the farmers but uh they connected with juan antonio ponce of ponce um in um uh why can i not think of the uh appellation that he's in he grows po ball uh look anyway juan antonio ponce is a great natural winemaker super talented guy making great po ball wines um it's gonna the, the do is gonna come to me later it's down by valencia um anyway so he's the winemaker here so this is equal parts sauvignon blanc and verdejo um harvested at different times about a month apart sauvignon blanc ripens earlier uh so that was ar harvested in uh like late august and then the um, verdejo was harvested in like mid-september um so harvested and made separately both of them see about a week of skin contact like five to seven days of skin contact in 200 liter clay vessels then they get racked to geez uh i believe then they get racked to a mix of 300 liter clay and large old oak fudra where they go through fermentation and then from there they get transferred to more uh, large old oak fudra that, you know, none of this oak, it's not like new toasty oak because A, that would be weird, you know, it adds a bunch of flavor to the wine and B, that's really expensive to buy new oak barrels and, you know, like then this would be a much more expensive wine. Uh, anyway, it gets transferred to those large old oak barrels to rest and come together as a wine, which is, it's, is more important when you have something like this with like more complexity with some skin contact here i'll hold this up so you can see uh it's not filtered it's not fined uh, they add a little tiny bit of sulfur at bottling and that's it so some of this color is from contact with the skins that like week of skin contact and then the gentle pressing off of the juice some of the color is also just i think from being in barrel in wood for that long and the tiny bit of oxidative you know exposure that the wine gets and then also from the very low you know almost non-existent uh, addition of sulfur when you don't use sulfur in the winemaking process um that like sulfur is also a clarifying agent and stuff so the wine will will end up being becoming a slightly darker color if there's not a lot of sulfur or no sulfur in the winemaking process so that's i think why you get this color um and like i said in that the wine is transferred a couple times between vessels and that's um i think probably partially why like 
it's a little bit cloudy, but it's not that cloudy, like compared to other orange wines. Also, it's not that much skin contact. Five to seven days is not, it's not three months. You know, those are different time periods. They're very different. Three months is a lot longer than five to seven days. All right, anyway, um, as the name would lead you to believe, Gulp Orange, this is an orange wine. There, I just said it out loud. It smells like orange wine. It smells tropical. Apricot. Lots of apricot. Apricot flesh, apricot like skin and pith as well. Zippy, a little bit of lemon, but also a little bit herbaceous. Like it's a little bit like, like lemongrass or something like that. Like there's a, ah, to, no, it's not tomato leaf, but it's something like that. Ah, boy, I don't know, it smells nice. Also meaty. A little pineapple-y. But like it doesn't smell super sweet. It doesn't smell like like bleh, like big and cloying or anything. It smells like fruit, but not um not cloying, not too much. Tiny bit like briny. I've been drinking a lot of wines like this with some skin contact recently that are like a tiny bit that are like kind of briny and stuff. I like it. It does have some nice acidity, more than you sort of expect, more than I sort of expected. Then the finish has a little bit more like meat and presence and stuff like that to it. Yeah, a little like, a little citrusy. Orangey, clementine, definitely clementine. That's what I'm getting on the finish. 100% cento per cento clementine on the finish. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it starts out sort of like dry, elegant, pretty like apricot flavor, then gets a little bit like meatier, then you get like clementine flavor, um, like orange juicy, like clementine, and then I get a little bit of tannin on the finish. And that's around the salt comes in like in the mid palate and when you get the clementine and stuff like that too. It's really nice. It's a, like, this is both, so it's an orange wine that has like texture and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's just like, it's more substantial than a super clean, crisp, whatever, whatever white wine, pick your favorite. Um, but it's not like full on orange wine, like, this is absolutely still like clean and refreshing and thirst quenching and stuff like that. Like this has really nice acidity. Like this is great chilled out here in the sun right now. Um, so this is sort of like, it's legit orange wine. You know, look at that color. But it's, it's in between, it sort of straddles both worlds. Um, it's still fun and thirst quenching and everything and like easy to drink, but, but just, has more presence, more mouthfeel, like it'll go with a different, broader range of food, like uh, I can just imagine a lot of tapas and a lot of like bruschetta and stuff like that this would be killer with. So, that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna eat a bunch of dinner and stuff like that and um, it's gonna be awesome. Probably not what's gonna happen. Actually, I'm gonna go home and uh, my three-year-old and seven-month-old are gonna be melting down and my partner is gonna need food right now and stuff and I'm gonna like do something crazy in the kitchen and it's going to be delicious but um there probably actually won't be a lot of sitting down and drinking wine so i'll just do that now have a great night